Strange Wills. Starring the distinguished Hollywood actor, Warren William. And featuring Loreen Tuttle and Leo Cleary. With Howard Culver and an all-star Hollywood cast. Original music by Del Castillo. Dead men's wills are often strange. We cannot attempt to understand them or try to find the answers. We can but tell the story. This is Warren William bringing you the story of Miser's Gold. But first... Now back to Warren William as John Francis O'Connell in Miser's Gold. Of all the strange, weird characters I've had the pleasure to represent in probate matters, none, I think, ever can measure up to the caliber of old Nick, gold miner extraordinary. I saw him for the first time on a cold March morning when he came up to my office for legal advice. He wore neither hat nor overcoat, and his toes, blue with cold, were sticking out of his broken shoes. <laughs> he was a character. Mr. O'Connell, I'm an old man, sick man, and I want to know what happens to your money when you kick the bucket. Well, Nick, under the law, it goes to your next of kin. If you have a wife and children, then... But I ain't got no wife and kids. Well, then to your blood relatives. That is, of course, if you die without making a will. And if I make a will? Then to whomsoever you name as beneficiaries, Nick. I only got one sister and two brothers. <laughs> well, you've answered your own question. But I don't want them to get my money. I hate them. Well, well, how about some charity? No, 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 I ain't going to give my money to no strangers, neither. Well, Nick, one thing is certain. If you have any money, you can't very well take it with you, can you? No, no, that's right. I can't take it with me. But then... Ain't going to give it to no strangers. And I don't want... Well, I'll think it over, Mr. O'Connell. I'll think it over. Now, how much do I owe you? Owe me? For that small consultation? Nothing, Nick. Uh, no, no, Mr. O'Connell. That ain't how I do my business. I pays for what I get. I'll take this paper bag and keep what's in it. And when I make up my mind, Mr. O'Connell, I'll get in touch with you. Very well, Nick. Good day to you. Bye, Mr. O'Connell. Bye. After Nick had left the office, I untied the string around the little paper bag he'd given me. It felt like a bag of sand. <laughs> Maybe old Nick was a beachcomber. I poured the contents out on my desk. Great Caesar, what couldn't be true. There it was. Yes, Mr. O'Connell. Marie, Marie, has that old character gone? Yes, I'm still fumigating the room. Well, come in here, Marie. Well, I'll be blessed. Were you asphyxiated, too? Look, look here on this paper. Don't tell me, let me guess. It, well, at least it looks like gold. Right, Marie. A little paper bag full of pure gold dust. That old codger gave it to me. And he looked like a pauper. And smelled worse. But who is he? Why the gold? Well, that's the strange part of it. Would you believe it, Marie, if I told you... Told me what, Mr. O'Connell? Well, I only know him by the name of Nick. I don't even know where he lives. <laughs> B 
But as it turned out, that wasn't the last of old Nick. One morning, Marie came running into my office. Look, look Mr. O'Connell, it's a postcard from that character that came in to see you. Huh? We know his last name now. It's Nick Bowler. And we know where he lives, too. Here, yeah, give it to me. Dear Mr. O'Connell, I thought over what you told me. I want you to come to my shack tonight. Take Silver Canyon Road to end. Then stop. And you'll see a path that goes up mountain. You'll have to walk the rest of the way. I live on the top of the mountain. You can't miss it. I want to make a will. Nick Bowler. Later that night, Marie and I set out for Nick's shack in the mountains. Who was this Nick Bowler? Had he more gold? <laughs> well, that seemed to be the inevitable conclusion. In any event, the next few hours would be decidedly interesting. Well, Mr. O'Connell, you've already had your bag of gold. Maybe after I transcribe all of your notes tonight, <laughs> he'll, uh, he'll give me one too, huh? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> but don't have any high hopes, Marie. This Nick is certainly a crackpot. Maybe he won't have a dime. Probably gave you his life savings. But how do you think he ever got the gold dust? Oh, maybe he's a prospector. Well, here we are. This looks like the end of the road. Oh, Nick said uh, when you get here, right here, to stop. <laughs> we couldn't go farther if we wanted to. Now then, now let's find that path. <sighs> oh, I never knew there was such a deserted place in the whole world. Well, it's dark, isn't it? Now I'll turn on my flashlight. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's the path. See over there to the right? Yeah, Look. That, that must be it, all right. Well, are you ready for a good climb, Marie? I didn't wear these pedal pushers for nothing. Oh, but this mountain looks awfully high. And steep, too. But let's get going. resting for a minute. This is the charge of the light brigade, you know. Phew. I guess maybe you're right. Isn't there any end to this? <laughs> we must be near the top. Can't be much farther. Suppose I give out with a few yoo-hoos. Maybe he'll hear us and, and show us a shortcut. <laughs> Not a bad idea. Try it. Hello? Hello? <laughs> well, that ought to wake the dead. Let's see if he heard us. Oh, listen to those dogs. Say, wait a minute. This might be serious. They're coming this way. I think this is where we start our return trip. We couldn't make the car before they caught up to us. Yes, but we might be able to get up in this, this tree. All right, though. quick. Here, give me your foot. Take them both, but get now me up then, there. Now then, up you go. Oh, I, I'm up. Now you hurry. Here, up, up I come. Give me your hand or something. Get I, up here. Here I come. Oh, just in time, too. That must, must be old Nick. Yeah. Well, here we are, Nick. Up here in this tree. The dogs busted out <laughs> when they heard a woman's voice. See, they don't like women. Uh, I'm about as popular as a polecat. Now, just a moment, Nick. I'll jump down. I brought my secretary along to take notes, Nick. Miss Humphrey. Yeah. You know Nick, of course. Ah. Uh, well, if one of you gentlemen would please disengage me from this tree. Oh, I'm sorry. Here, give me your hand. Oh, for the days of Sir Walter Raleigh. <laughs> now then, down you come. Ooh. Uh, I'm glad you got here, Mr. O'Connell, both of you. Uh, let me lead the way. It ain't far from here. Well, Marie, are you ready to begin climbing again? Lead on, Macduff. After this workout, I'll be ready to play ball with the Dodgers. <laughs> Folks, here we are. So, this is where you live, Nick. Yeah. No wonder you haven't any neighbors. Hmm. Only got one. He lives about a mile away. Can see, I don't live very fancy like. It's just a one room shack on the mountaintop. It ought to be nice and breezy. High on a windy hill. <laughs> Sometimes I think the wind like to blow me in the shack right down the mountain. <laughs> well, let's go in and get down to brass tacks. After you, Marie. Well, chair, table. And a pile of bags. Yeah, not much furniture, but then <laughs> I can only sit on one chair at a time. <laughs> Marie, 
Hmm? Be a good girl and park yourself on the sandbag. Oh, <laughs> going to be ducky. Now then, Nick, we're ready to go to work. And I never told you much, Mr. O'Connell, the day I come to your office. Well, suppose you tell me now just what you have to will away and who you want to get it. I got a sister. Her name is Sarah. And two brothers, Herman and Otto. Getting this, Marie? Um, heirs at law, next of kin. Sister Sarah, brothers Herman and Otto. Yeah, yeah, that's right. My sister was married. Her husband died. Name is Stevens now. She and my brothers all live in town. Say, before we take inventory, um, I wish you'd pardon me just a minute while I try making this sandbag a little more comfortable. <coughs> Doesn't dent very easily. <laughs> Feels more like concrete than sand. <laughs> That's my ballast, miss. It helps to keep my house from blowing off the mountain. Hold up there. Let me give me a hand there. Thank you. Don't know if you noticed, but there are ten bags, and each one's got a name. Oh, you named the sandbags, too. Yep. Huh? This one's Evelyn, and that one's Gert, and you're sitting on Mert. Oh, oh, I'm so sorry, Mert. And below <laughs> is Hattie, Alice, and Marty. Those are your girls, eh, Nick? Not exactly, Mr. O'Connell, but they're the only women I ever knew. I just like them. I just like them. Yep, each bag's got a name. Here, I'll show you why. Hey, pardon me, miss. I'll, oh. I'll open up Murph here. Uh, put that paper on the floor, eh, miss? One put it right there. On the floor. Yeah. That's it. Now, what's coming out? Look. <gasps> Gold. It's yellow. It's... <sighs> Oh, no, no, I'm seeing things. No, no, it, it, it's gold, all right. Every last bag is filled with gold. Yeah, look at her run. Later, when I recovered my composure and Marie got over her shock, Nick told me his story. Yeah, you want to know how I got my gold? I'll tell you. In my family, I was always a dumb one. My brothers and sisters would laugh at me because I couldn't get no place in school. Oh, well, you certainly had the last laugh, Nick. And when my father died, he left his business to my two brothers, Herman and Otto, his house and money to my sister. And to me, he just gave me a mule, a mule that he used in his business. Her name was Annabella. Well, I took Annabella and went into the mountains. Nobody said goodbye. They was glad to get rid of me. One night, I camped by a mountain stream. I was downright lonely, hungry, and sick of living. Annabella had wandered off to look for grass, and then... Annabella, what's the matter? Wait, 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 Annabella, I'm coming. Oh, oh, there you are. Now, let's see what your trouble is. Quiet, quiet, will you? Oh, so you cut your halter rope on a rock, eh? Well, keep your dander down, and I'll have you loose in two shakes. <laughs> Step pretty tight. Come on, Annabella. We'll have to pull together now. Come on. <laughs> uh, uh, I had to pull half the mountain off to get you loose. Now, be a good girl and bed yourself down. Bed yourself down. Annabella. Annabella. Look. Look. Where the stone came out. It's... It's gold. Gold, Annabella. We've hit pay dirt. You see, sand full of pure gold. Part two of Strange Wills, written by Ken Crapine and directed by Robert Webster Light, will follow in just a moment. But first, a word from your announcer.
And now back to the Strange Wills story, Miser's Gold, with Warren William as John Francis O'Connell. And in these bags, Nick, is what you got out of your placer mine? Yeah, Mr. O'Connell, I filled ten bags with gold, I did, and then it ran out. But it was enough. Took me over five years to get. Every night when I came in from the diggings, I'd let the gold dust run through my fingers. And when I filled each bag, I'd give it a name, kind of like, uh, well, kind of like a friend. I wish I had some friends like that, Nick. I'd settle for even one. Marie. Hmm? Well, a girl can wish, can't she? Well, then my mule, Arabella, died. Buried her next to the mine. Got kind of lonesome and figured I'd pay a visit to my kinfolks. Thought maybe the years had softened them up. I was ready to share my gold if they was decent to me. I went down to the city. We haven't anything for tramps. But I ain't a tramp. Sarah, don't you know me? Know you? No. Why? Why, you're Nick. Yes, Sarah. I'm your brother, Nick. Well, what do you want? I thought I'd sort of pay you a visit, Sarah. I'm... I'm rich now. You rich? Oh, you're crazier than ever. Now, wait a minute. Here, take this $5 bill and go away. We don't want you to disgrace our family name. But, Sarah, don't you understand? I'm... I don't want to understand any more than I can see. Take the money and go away now before I change my mind. All right, Sarah. All right, I'll go. But here, uh, take your money. I don't need well... it. <laughs> News about my strike spread like wildfire through the town, especially when I paid my bills in gold. My brother Herman finally ran into me one day on the main street. Nick, Nick, you can't imagine how glad we all are to know that you're well <laughs> and rich. Good to see you. Yep, Herman, I, I done all right. We, we want you to come to dinner tonight. We, we'll all be there to kill the, <laughs> the fatted calf. Dinner? Yeah, but Herman, Sarah told me I... Then you must tell us all about your gold. <laughs> Maybe all of us can share in your good fortune. Hey, Nick? <laughs> After all, we are your blood relatives. Sure, come on over for dinner. About seven, huh, Nick? All right, Herman. I'll see you all tonight. <laughs> I got to Herman's house a little before seven. It was getting dark. I walked along the side of the house and passed by an open window. Inside, I could see my two brothers and Sarah, and they was talking. Have you made arrangements with the judge, Otto? Now, Sarah, everything is taken care of. After he leaves here tonight, he'll be picked up as a vagrant. Isn't that right, Herman? Yes. The judge promised to give him a hearing right away. Mm -hmm. And see that he's committed to an asylum. Yes. And Otto... As soon as we find out where he lives, we'll just go out there and take possession. Why, of course. Meantime, one of us will get appointed as conservator of his estate. Does that mean anything to you, Sarah? Yes, it will, if we can find his gold. We must a lot have a lot of it hidden away somewhere. We'll find out where it is, Nick and we'll go Nick was out... always too dumb to be rich anyway. Just like that mule father willed him. Remember? Oh, that <laughs> mule. <laughs> I come back to the hills, and I ain't never seen them since. Well, Nick, I can't really blame you for not wanting to leave them your fortune. But if you don't, it'll have to go to other people. I know, I know. For six months, night and day, I've been trying to figure a way of giving it to them and still making sure they can't spend it. Huh? Yeah, but I guess it can't be done. They're bound to get it one way or another. I want you to make my will. <laughs> give it my kinfolks <coughs> everything... I'll take care of the rest. <laughs> yeah, I'll take care of the rest. Realizing that Nick was really a very sick man, I lost no time in preparing his will and taking it out to his shack for his signature. As I neared the top of the mountain... Hello, hello, Nick. Hello, Nick, where are you? Oh, go right in the shack, Mr. O'Connell. 
I'm just fixing things up underneath here. I'll be right up. Fixing things, eh? <laughs> well, this place could stand a little fixing. <laughs> you got my will? Yes, I've got it. Good, then let's get it over with. Old Nick must have had a premonition of what was coming because just a few days later, he was found dead in his cabin by his only friend and neighbor on the mountain. His neighbor called me immediately as Nick had instructed him to do. After reporting Nick's death to the proper authorities, I called his sister, Sarah. Yes? Are you Mrs. Uh, Sarah Stevens? Yes, who is this and what do you want? And this is John Francis O'Connell, attorney at law. You have a brother, a brother named Nick? Yes, what about it? He asked me to call you as soon as I was informed of his death. Death? Nick dead? When? Where? I am informed that he died sometime during the night. A neighbor found his body this morning. Oh, where? In his house. He lived in a little shack on top of the mountain at the end of Silver Canyon Road. Did he turn over anything to you? His, uh, no, his... no, nothing has been turned over. That, of course, will have to be done through legal channels. Well, now, look here. He was our brother, wasn't he? What he had belongs to us. Herman, Otto, and me are his only relatives. Yes, I know. We'll go out but... immediately and take possession of his property. The end of Silver Canyon Road, you say? Uh, I wouldn't advise that for two reasons. First, certain legal steps will have to be taken. The coroner will have to examine the body, and then provision will have to be made. All for... right, all right, so you've advised us. You've done your duty. But just let someone try and stop us from going. What he's got belongs to us, and Mr. We aim to get it. Well, what a charming female. I could see greed coming right out of the telephone. I wonder why old Nick insisted that you call her as soon as you found out he was dead. To since she didn't want those three vultures to get his gold that quick. No, he should have known there'd be no stopping them once they heard the news. No stopping him's right. I bet they're on the way right now. I wonder, Marie. I wonder if old Nick didn't want them to get there first. What? But why? Well, what did he say the last time you saw him? How did he feel about it the day you went out there to have him sign his will? Well, he didn't say anything. Felt fine as far as I could see. Yes, I remember. He was all smiles. Had a saw in his hand when I met him. <laughs> what was he doing? Trimming the shrubbery? <laughs> <laughs> he might have been trimming his beard, for all I know. <laughs> wait a minute. Marie, wait a minute. What's the matter, Mr. O'Connell? You look sick. I am sick, Marie. Get your hat and coat. Well, well, wait a minute. What's no the matter? No time to talk now. Come on. We've got a trip to make, and every second counts. <laughs> Why can't this car go faster? Why can't it... You're already making 72. What do you expect when you're climbing them out? Faster, faster. We've got to go faster. Almost. Almost up to the, the top, Marie. Oh. Don't give up. We've got to make it. We've got to... Look, look, the shack is still there. It's still there. Oh, thank heaven. Come on, let's run for it. Yeah, I'm right behind you. We'll make it, we'll make it. There goes the shack. We're, we're too late. There's old Nick's answer, just as I feared. You were right. Oh, how horrible, Mr. O'Connell. I can't believe it. Warren William will be back in just a moment to tell you the rest of the story of the probate cause of Miser's Gold. But first, here is a brief message from your announcer.
And now again, here is Warren William as John Francis O'Connell. You see, Marie, Nick knew that if I had any inkling of his mad plan, I would have stopped it. But how did he ever manage to have the shack tumble down the mountainside just when his two brothers and sister were in it? His family may have called him the dumb one, but in reality, Nick was shrewd and crafty. Mm -hmm. He knew all about the stress and strain of timbers from his experience working his mine. He knew, too, that Sarah, Herman, and Otto were greedy. Oh, yes. That they would rush out to his shack to find his hoard of gold the minute I let them know old Nick was dead. And if you remember, Nick insisted time and time again that they should be notified immediately. Mm -hmm. We know now that Nick sawed into and weakened the supports that held his shack to the mountainside and waited for his greedy relatives to bring him the revenge he so wanted. Oh. Well, they came all right. They stormed into the shack and began tearing everything apart looking for the gold. Their combined weight brought their own destruction. The supports collapsed, and the shack with its unholy three crashed down the mountainside. Well, it seems to me they were all guilty of one sin or another. Every one of them. And how unnecessary. If Sarah would only have listened, I would have told her that Nick had made a will and left everything to them. There was no necessity for their mad race to destruction. Well, that's about all. You know the rest of it. Oh, but one thing. When did you first realize what old Nick was up to? Oh, it suddenly dawned on me the morning in the office. I remembered then that the day Nick signed his will, I heard the sound of a saw. Oh. And then I recalled how anxious he was to have me notify his relatives as soon as he died. Too late, I saw the plan of his revenge. He really got his revenge, didn't he? Yes, but uh, not entirely. Sarah and Herman died, of course, but uh, Otto survived the fall. And eventually, he will get the entire fortune. You see, Marie, old Nick never learned that two wrongs don't make a right. Next week, I have a thriller for you about savage love and romance in the uncharted wilds of the frigid north. Into this desolate and rugged land north of Hudson's Bay, a beautiful, willful young girl comes to claim her inheritance, an enormous tract of land left to her in the last will of a deceased relative. Here she found a peaceful land of virgin forests and Pierre Baptiste Leblanc, French-Canadian trapper, who molds women to his way of life, or else. But the girl had a mind of her own. That is, until the night the timber wolves serenaded her just outside her cabin door. And then... <laughs> well, I can promise you a story filled with action and suspense. Will the strength and brawn of Pierre Baptiste Leblanc finally win over the determination of this pampered, beautiful woman to resist love in the frozen wastes of the far north? You'll find the answer in the story we call East of Hudson's Bay. This is Warren William, inviting you to listen again next week. Strange Wills is a Telaways feature produced in Hollywood. Any similarity between names used on this broadcast and those of living persons is purely coincidental.